Hello everyone, Ewan here, and just before we begin, I want to really quickly give a shout out to Skillshare, who are now working with us here on What Culture Comics to help you access all sorts of awesome classes, but more on that later. Where would the Silver Surfer be without his cosmic surfboard? Thanos without his Infinity Gauntlet, or Wonder Woman with the, checks notes, spine and skull of Superman wrapped around the Lasso of Truth? Once you've seen the Princess of the Amazons wielding the spinal column of her former ally to take down mutant monsters in a post-apocalyptic future, every other weapon sort of pales in comparison. I'm Ewan, you're watching War Culture Comics, and here are 10 comic book weapons that broke all the rules. Number 10, The Infinity Gauntlet. The Infinity Gauntlet made its debut in the pages of Marvel Comics some 30 years ago, but few would have predicted it would go on to become such an indelible part of the Marvel mythos. First appearing in Silver Surfer number 44 in 1990, the Infinity Gauntlet was forged with the sole purpose of harnessing the power of all the Infinity Gems into one destructive weapon. Thanos used the device in a bid to first impress Lady Death, who he fancied the pants off at the time, back in Jim Starlin's seminal Infinity Gauntlet comic from 1990 which resulted in the deaths of half the entire universe. Adam Warlock managed to wrest control of the gauntlet from the Mad Titan eventually, thanks to a little help from Nebula, who he then also had to defeat, and the weapon has since featured sporadically in various other Marvel comics. As a weapon though, the Infinity Gauntlet is incredibly unique. It harnessed the power of some of the most powerful individual items in the galaxy, and briefly consigned Marvel's greatest heroes to all kinds of grisly fates, especially Wolverine, whose bones Thanos turned to goop. Number 9. All Black the Necro Sword. To begin with, All Black was just the weapon of Gore the God Butcher, a character introduced at the beginning of what would become a character-defining stint on Mighty Thor from writer Jason Aaron and artist Asad Ribich. I say just, Gore was an incredibly unique character who had a bone to pick with all the gods of Asgard, and All Black was right at the centre of his quest for revenge. What would take the Necro Sword from being just another cool weapon to feature in the tales of Asgard to truly next-level territory, though, was Donnie Cades and Ryan Stegman's run on Venom. Cades and Stegman's work built upon Brian Bendis and Valerio Shitty's treatments of the symbiotes in their underrated Guardians of the Galaxy run, which retconned them from being inherently evil alien creatures into the exact opposite. Venom also revealed that All Black was really the first ever symbiote, created by the Dark God Null when he slayed one of the first ever Celestials during the universe's inception. That one change has flipped the history of the symbiotes completely on its head, and the Marvel Universe is all the better for it. Number 8. Pretty much everything in the Fourth World Saga. The Fourth World was Jack Kirby at his best and most bonkers, a series that kickstarted with the writer and artist literally killing the old gods he'd helmed while at Marvel and replacing them with the new gods, immortal beings of Kirby's own creation who inhabited the worlds of New Genesis, a planet comprised entirely of all that was good and noble, and Apocalypse, a place that was everything New Genesis was not. At the core of this new mythos was the conflict between these two two worlds, the former led by Highfather and the latter by Darkseid. The new gods employed all kinds of weapons and technology in their war against each other, whether it be Darkseid's own Omega Beams, Metron's Mobius Chair, Orion's Astro Harness, Mother Boxes, and Boom Tubes, or the anti-life equation the Lord of Apocalypse desperately coveted. The Fourth World Saga changed the fabric of the DC Universe forever, and it's yet another thing readers have Kirby to thank for. Number 7. Hellboy's Right Hand of Doom Anung Unrama has employed all manner of different weapons, whether as a part of the BPRD or in his adventures after leaving the organization behind, but undoubtedly the coolest is his stony right hand of doom, which also happens to be the key that will usher in the apocalypse. No pressure. Hellboy's signature arm has often come in handy, please 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 forgive me for that, and more so actually than the various firearms, swords, and ancient relics the character has also employed in combat. Go back through the original run of Hellboy books from Mike Mignola and colorist Dave Stewart's annual be treated to plenty of one-page spreads of the character decking his enemy in one punch. Plus, what could possibly be cooler than using the weapon that's meant to destroy the Earth to protect it? Well, maybe a few things, but not many. Number 6. The War Thor's Hammer the War Thor's hammer was originally wielded by the Thor from the Ultimate Universe, but made its way across to Earth-616 following the events of Secret Wars, which destroyed the Ultimate Universe and merged parts of it with the main Marvel continuity. Volstagg, one of the Warriors Three, eventually lifts the Alt-Universe Mjolnir after he fails to save a group of Light Elf refugees from Malekith's forces, thus transforming into the War Thor. 
The War Thor's hammer has no enchantments on it that would prohibit those who were unworthy from wielding it, and also possesses some powers the original Mjolnir does not, such as teleportation. It even transformed Volstagg's personality, turning him into a being of relentless rage and fury that Jane Foster's Thor had to save. The War Thor's hammer later became Undyarn, a new malleable weapon employed by Foster once she assumed the mantle of Valkyrie, and it is just as cool. Now, at the start of the video, I told you that we partnered up with Skillshare, and now I want to tell you why. Skillshare is a huge online learning community with thousands of classes for things like illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and pretty much everything else, and we've got a really cool offer for you guys to try it out. We're genuinely so excited to be partnering with them on What Culture Comics, because not only is it like all the good parts of university without anybody in neon paint trying to sell me wristbands for a bad nightclub, it's also a platform we've been using ourselves to help make the videos you guys love to watch. Watch. Case in point, Josh has finally learned how to pronounce Darkseid, and we're all very proud of him. But I've been checking out Thomas Frank's productivity for creatives over on Skillshare too. I don't know about you, but if you've also found yourself working from home as a result of the pandemic, you may have also encountered periods where it's difficult to actually be creative. I love this class because it provides a clear building block of how to keep your creative cycle going, whether that be talking about different mindsets to adopt, or even something as simple as ensuring your own workspace is conducive to what it is you're trying to achieve. We'd really love you guys to get the same experience and have access to these classes as well, so we're offering What Culture Viewers a free membership trial of Skillshare Premium. Just click the link in the description, and if you want the first 1,000 to do so, you'll get unlimited access to thousands of classes from quality teachers. After that, a yearly subscription is less than $10 a month, which is crazy, crazy good value. Thanks again to everyone at Skillshare, we'll have more on this over the coming months, but for now, back to the video. Number 5. The Silver Surfer's Surfboard Right, okay, so take a minute to look at the Silver Surfer. In fact, before you even do that, just say the character's name aloud. Norrin Rad. It's bonkers. He's wonderful. The entire package is a brilliant daft combination, and it's also the coolest thing ever. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's cosmic superhero was first introduced in the pages of Fantastic Four as the Herald of Galactus, a monstrous planet eater who'd lined up Earth to be his next snack. Norrin was himself a member of a planet that one day found itself in Galactus's path, but offered to become the being's personal cosmic caterer so that he would spare his homeworld. The Silver Surfer is, like all Heralds of Galactus, Galactus imbued with the power cosmic. This means he's one of the most powerful characters in the galaxy already, but when you factor his surfboard into the mix as well, the surfer easily breaks into the top tier of Marvel's most epic individuals. As for the surfboard itself, you just have to admire it. It's something only Jack Kirby could have come up with, and the fact this chrome cosmic character has endured for so long is a testament to just how brilliant an idea it was. Number 4. Bullseye's Many Improvised Weapons Arguably one of the most well-worn action tropes is that of the character who does not miss. It's a staple of movie westerns and in the action genre more generally, and it's equally well represented in comics too. Green Arrow, Hawkeye, and Deadshot are just some of the characters who plied their trade based on the fact they just don't miss, but by far the deadliest accuracy obsessive is Bullseye. At one time a goofball screw-up who couldn't kill Daredevil, Frank Miller changed the character into one of the Man Without Fear's greatest adversaries by having him kill Elektra. From there, Bullseye became one of Marvel's most ruthless villains, utilizing a wide arsenal of weapons to dispatch targets with varying degrees of brutality. Part of what makes Bullseye so different when compared to those other characters though is that he isn't beholden to any one kind of weapon. Hawkeye and Green Arrow have their bows and Deadshot his firearms, but Bullseye is just as deadly using a pencil, a baseball, or just any old tat that's lying around. To Bullseye, everything is a weapon, making him a deadly prospect even when he's armless, like some kind of crazed MacGyver supervillain. Number 3. The Miracle Machine the Miracle Machine, in essence, does what it says on the tin. It makes real any thought you input into it. A creation of the Guardians of the Universe that was first used by the Legion of Superheroes far in the future, the Miracle Machine has found itself in the middle of several universe-altering events over the years. In particular, Final Crisis, where it was utilized by Superman to undo the damage caused by Darkseid when he unleashed the anti-life equation across the universe. Because it's so powerful, and because it would seemingly solve almost every problem the DCU could possibly be met with, the Miracle Machine has not appeared since the events of Final Crisis. Number 2. Arm Fall Off Boy's Body, Legion of Superheroes 
Speaking of the Legion of Superheroes, it would be remiss to make a list on comic book weapons that broke all the rules and to not include Arm Falloff Boy, whose entire powers are literally just being able to detach his arms and wield them like a meat club at his enemies. The character's first appearance came in 1989's Secret Origins number 46, where he auditioned unsuccessfully to join the Legion as the group began to recruit their first ever team. He enthusiastically demonstrates his powers, but leaves the interview dejected, which somehow also didn't lead to a career as the best supervillain ever. Now, tragically, Arm Fall Off Boy was wiped away from DC continuity with Zero Hour Crisis in Time. His legacy is far stronger than any old retcon, though, and the character has since been reimagined as Splitter, a figure who can not only detach their own arms, but their legs as well. Now, that's character development. And number one, Superman's Spine and Skull. DC's Black Label imprint has proven to be one of the publisher's best initiatives over the last few years. Some seriously great stories have been made that otherwise wouldn't have been in the traditional DC setup. Case in point, Wonder Woman Dead Earth, a terrific post-apocalyptic offering from Daniel Warren Johnson that sees Diana wake up in a future where the Earth has been ravaged by nuclear conflict. At times dispiriting, but also simultaneously hopeful, Johnson's comic cuts to the core of what makes Wonder Woman woman such a compelling hero, and does so in a way that hasn't ever been seen before. She's a character caught between two worlds, and she's willing to fight for both of them, but now she's also having to provide hope where there isn't any. I won't spoil Dead Earth more than is absolutely necessary, but one thing prospective readers should know is that at one point Wonder Woman wields the spine and skull of Superman in battle against the mutated Hydra enemies who threaten her and a surviving enclave of humans. She threads the lasso of truth through her old friend's bones, and it makes for some of the most spectacular imagery ever featured in a DC book. It's that good. And those were 10 comic book weapons that broke all the rules. Know of any other crazy comics weaponry? Let me know in the comments below, and please don't forget to drop the video a like as well if you enjoyed it. If you want to see more content like this, then please be sure to subscribe to the channel too, and remember that you can find more content like this in the written word over at whatculture.com forward slash comics. I've been Ewan, you can catch more of me on Twitter if you would like to, at Ewan Ruins Things, and I will see you next time. Bye!